Hello friends, this Sunday I will be unboxing and reviewing a pen product from a California based company Narwhal which has been rebranded recently as Narvalur. Narvalur is the newly branded name of a pen company which has been manufacturing some aesthetically appealing fountain pens and nibs all in house. Founded in 2019, the original name of the company was Narwhal and in 2022 it changed its name to Narvalur which is Icelandic for the Narwhal whale found in the Canadian and Greenland Arctic regions. The name change was apparently prompted by the fact that the internet search for Narwhal gave out species of the whale instead of the company and ostensibly the pen company was pushed down the search in the results. Be that as it may, today we will be unboxing and reviewing the translucent black version of the Nahvalur Original Plus limited edition pen which they have named Lovina Black. The pen with me is a fine nib, the nib is made in house with a rose gold coating over the steel material. The pen is a limited edition one since its manufacturing was limited to 500 pieces only the world over. As we experience the pen, we shall be doing some feature overview, size and weight assessment, ink the pen and use the pen on various paper types and qualities. Let us now flip the camera for the unboxing. Okay, so now we go on to the unboxing of the pen. Now the pen comes in a cardboard box like this, which has the narwhal written on both sides of it. And this is the signature branding of the narwhal veil. Now the pen comes in a cardboard box like this and there is a wonderful leather pen sleeve which houses the pen. This is the pen. Let me keep it aside. We have a cleaning cloth supplied by the seller and there is a user manual come warranty card. It has some maintenance tips and the dealer stamp. So let me keep it aside and look at the pen. So this is the pen. It's as they say Lovina black. This part of the barrel as you can see is entirely transparent. There is an inlaid metal here, a signature Navalur style. There is spring loaded clip which is fairly tough to engage and use. There is a band here which says Norwal on both sides. There is a blind cap and the pen unscrews in a slightly less than maybe around uh, two rotations. So, this is the nib of the pen. It is a steel nib with a rose gold plating with that signature narwhal logo inlaid. The feed is plastic and there is an ink hole here which actually sucks up the ink. Interestingly, this is a vac filler pen uh, which means that the blind cap has to be unscrewed and once it is disengaged, it needs to be pulled back. This is fairly tight as I can see. This creates a vacuum somewhere here and 
as we push it there is a section here where the barrel slightly flares, fro flares from the inside which creates a vacuum and the ink gets pulled into the barrel. Now, we will be doing the inking part a bit later and this section has to be screwed tight so that this part is engaged. Interestingly, unlike most other vac fillers or vacuum fillers, this pen can be opened or unscrewed and there is a rubber o ring here which actually seals this section. And the advantage of this unscrewing at this part is that this pen can be very easily very easily cleaned from both sides. For today's inking, I am using a pilot blue this is it the first part of the inking will be to unscrew and disengage the blind cap the washer here creates a vacuum we will see it as we dip it into the ink pot So, the basic functioning of the vac filler is this as I keep pushing as I dip this part into the ink pot and push this section down somewhere at this point there is an in internal flaring of the barrel which pops the vacuum created from where the ink will gushing we will see how it works. So, the vacuum is almost primed. And at this point, the vacuum will pop and the ink will gush in. There it is. So, this is how a vac filler is filled. As you can see it is not filled fully, but there is a trick which I will show in a subsequent video as to how this entire section can be filled with ink. But at the same time the ink that is ordinarily here is well above a millimeter a milliliter sorry and that is quite some amount of ink. Now, the next task is to screw it. tightly now if we do it tightly this section is sealed off so if you screw it tightly after writing for a couple of pages the ink that is already there in the feed may dry up after which you may need to slightly unscrew it so that the ink from the barrel can flow in and you can continue writing so ordinarily the golden rule is if you screw it fully this section the ink containing section of the barrel is separated from this part and this comes in handy when we move from one pressure situation to another especially when we travel in air or when we are moving in areas where there is a variation in temperature which causes the expansion of air that is in the barrel. Th this essentially is a safety feature which prevents messing up the pen or messing up this part once the ink is free to flow from this barrel section to the feed section under variations in pressure or temperature. Right? So, since we will be doing a very brief writing sample, I will keep this section engaged. Now, we go on to the writing sample. 
Now for a writing sample, I will first see how the pen works on a slightly thicker 100 GSM paper. Okay, so it is a fairly wet ink, the upstrokes are slightly finer, Well, the nib glides very smoothly on paper. The nib is fairly stiff, so there are very little variations in thickness of the calligraphy type. It takes a couple of maybe around 10 seconds to dry. So, this is the writing sample for the fine nib of Navalur. Now, we will move on to a paper that is not as thick which is a 65 GSM paper and see whether the ink bleeds through the page. I detect a slight feedback at the point where the tip of the nib touches this paper. So, this is it, it has almost dried. Now, let me turn the page to check. Yes, there are sections where the ink has bled through the paper though I do not find any branching of the inks on the writing face of the paper. So, this is it. Overall, it is a very good writer. The nib has that little bit amount of feedback which very often uh, fountain pen users prefer rather than an experience where the nib plainly glides over without any feedback that gives the special feel that we are using fountain pens rather than a gel pen or a ballpoint pen. So, this is all about the writing sample. Now, we will go on to some features of the pen and some aspects which I like and which I do not like. Okay, now, we go on to some features of the pen which I like and some features which I do not find interesting. The first interesting aspect of this pen is the nib. The nib as such is very unassuming, but with a rose gold plating on a steel material, the design inlays are very very interesting and this is one of the very few pens where I find that the F for the fine is inscribed at its left side. See if I can focus it for you. Then we have a narwhal whale logo and this beautiful inscription. The nib looks very very pleasing to the eyes. 
The other aspect of this pen is the grip section. As we can see, this pen has a fairly thick girth. At this point, it slightly tapers down. and then it tapers down further and suddenly there is a flaring at this particular end which tends to ensure that the fingers do not slip or slide into the nip section because this is a shiny black plastic. So, for those who have sweaty fingers this can serve as some form of a reassurance. Well, another interesting section of this pen is the grip section. As we can see, this pen has a fairly wide girth at the center of this ink holding barrel section, after which there is a step down and this part narrows down further until a couple of millimeters before the point where the nib section begins it flares up slightly and this design actually helps secure fingers especially for those who may be having sweaty fingers at the end of a prolonged spell of writing. So, this aspect uh, makes the pen uh, a bit more user friendly this is one aspect of it. The other aspect of this pen lies in the cap itself. The cap is very much as you can see shaped in the form of a barrel. It is narrower here, it flares up to this point where it, it is at its maximum girth and this girth is maintained until it slightly tapers down to the metallic ring section which has narwhal inscribed on both sides. So, this is an interesting aspect of the pen. The other interesting aspect of this pen uh, lies perhaps in its naming. This pen or this model of the pen is termed Navalur Original Plus and uh, it is different from the Navalur Original in that the plus variant is actually a vac filler whereas the original Navalur was a piston filler. Now as I have demonstrated vac fillers can be intimidating for some users, but nevertheless the advantage of a vac filler is that it houses uh, a fairly large amount of ink and which is in any case more than a cartridge or a converter. Now as I have demonstrated to fill the pen we need to unscrew this blind cap at the end, extend the plunger place the nib into an ink well or an ink bottle and press down the plunger that creates a vacuum and the vacuum suddenly pops at this point where the ink gushes in to fill a large section of the barrel though a couple of repetitions may be required to ensure that the barrel is filled with ink. Interestingly like most Japanese style vac fillers this vac filler too has a safety valve and the safety valve is that as this section is screwed to the full this part of the pen which actually holds the ink is cut off or sealed from the feed section which ensures that when you are moving from an area with differential pressure, pressure, air pressure, the ink from the barrel would not move out and make this place messy. We find this very often in pens which do not have this separation mechanism whereby in aircrafts for example, fountain pens tend to flow out from its ink holding section to ma make the whole section messy. So, this is one aspect the downside to this is that once we screw it or engage it fully 
this feed section which will have the ink will help you last maybe a page or so of writing after which this section will dry up since, since the supply line is sealed at this point in time. At that point in time this has to be unscrewed slightly so that the separation is disengaged and ink flows again from the ink containing section to the barrel section. So, this is a slight downside to an otherwise very robust safety mechanism which most vac filler manufacturers install in their pens today. So, these are the aspects of the pen which I found interesting and which I felt uh, should be shared with potential users. Thank you. Well, I wish to end the functional part of this review with weighing the pen when inked and getting an assessment of its size. Now, to weigh the pen first, now this pen is inked with its cap on and we find that it weighs 34 grams with the cap and without the cap it weighs 21, 21 grams. So, this is with regard to the weight, the weight as such is not very very unpleasantly heavy. Now, we do some length and size comparisons. So, this is a centimeter scale, we place it at the point where the calibration begins. It is slightly longer than 14 centimeters, maybe 14 and a half centimeters long. So, it is fairly manageable in terms of its length. The third important aspect will be to check how much is its girth at the gripping end for which I am using an electronic vernier. Let me see how it weighs how it. So, at the gripping section it weighs a fairly comfortable 9.3 millimeter. So, there is a, so this is uh, a girth which is fairly manageable it, it tapers down to 9 millimeter at its narrowest point. So, this is a fairly manageable girth at the place where we usually grip the pen. So, overall the pen ticks all the right boxes in terms of usability for the writers uh, and I would recommend this pen any day to someone who wishes to get an experience of a vac filler which is transparent and which can be sturdily used. Thank you. So, friends thank you for watching. With this we come to the end of a review of a very interesting pen. We will be back next Sunday with another interesting review. If you have any queries, suggestions or comments, please feel free to use the chat box and do not forget to share since this may benefit some of the potential users. Thank you. See you next Sunday.